One of the handiest tools in After Effects is the Effects and Presets panel. As its name implies, it does two things. It allows you to search and apply effect plugins, and allows you to search, apply, and save animation presets. Now this is a fairly tall panel, so it's useful to rearrange your panels to give it more room. We usually collapse preview to give a little bit more height. And if necessary, we'll even pull down the timeline and pull over the comp panel to give more room so that we can see longer names. Let's say you're interested in finding what plugin effects had the word blur in their names. Just type blur into the quick search dialog, and you'll see two things. Animation presets that have blur in the name, and also all of your effects plugins that have blur in their names. There's two ways you can apply one of these effects to a piece of footage. One, if you can see the footage already in the composition panel, just go ahead and grab your effect and drag it straight onto that footage. And you'll see it opens over here in the effect controls panel. Another way is to select a layer or even multiple layers ahead of time, then double click the effect and it'll be applied to all of your selected layers. And you'll see it's on all those pieces of footage. Pretty simple. Now there's other things that this panel can tell you. For example, you'll see some very small icons, say eight, 16, or 32. That tells you the maximum bit depth that, that plugin works at. For example, CC Radial Blur only processes footage at eight bits per color channel. However, this radial blur I just applied will go ahead and work in floating point mode, 32 bits per channel. Additional information and options can be found underneath the options menu for the effects and presets panel. You can go ahead and search by categories, and then these would match the effects menu. Finder folders, the folders saved on your hard drive, or in alphabetical order. You can also decide what to show or not show. For example, if you did not want to be distracted by animation presets, you could turn that off and the animation presets menu would disappear. I'm going to go ahead and leave it on for now. Now, the other thing this panel is useful for is applying animation presets. Let me go ahead and delete my previous search and I'll twirl open the animation presets folders. An animation preset can contain effects, keyframes, masks, basically anything that you can see in the timeline panel can be saved in an animation preset. These can then be later applied to whatever layer you choose. After Effects ships with literally hundreds of presets developed by Adobe that create automatic backgrounds, um, different image processing effects. We particularly like the behaviors, which are up here at the top. Lots of great presets. There's a couple ways of applying a preset. If you already know what preset you're after, for example, if I know I want to apply this colorized gold dip to a piece of footage, I just go ahead and double click it or drag it over just like any other effect, and you'll see it's applied to my footage. On the other hand, if I want to browse my presets, there's a very handy Browse Presets command right here in the Options menu. And what that will do is open Adobe Bridge. Here I am inside Adobe Bridge, and you'll see folders that have the same names as we saw back in the Effects and Presets panel. Each one of these folders contains a different category of animation presets that Adobe supplied with the program. For example, if I open up the Shape Layers and look at its backgrounds, I'll see a number of animated backgrounds that Adobe's provided. And if I click one of them, you'll see it's previewed over in this special window. Here's a couple of the different presets. Now Adobe provides quite a few useful presets. For example, there's a large number of text animation presets broken down into several categories. And again, I'll select one and see it animated in the preview panel to see what it looks like. Now let's say that I wanted to apply one of these presets to a selected layer back in After Effects. For example, I'll select one of these bad TV presets and you can see what it looks like over here in preview. Just like I did in the effects and presets panel, I double click it and it'll be applied to my selected layer back in After Effects. Bridges switch me back to After Effects automatically and you'll see here's my treated footage and here's all of the effects that were in that animation preset. As I drag my time marker through, you can see that my footage has now been processed by that animation preset. If I don't like that preset, it's a simple matter of undoing to remove the effect and switching back into Bridge and choosing a different preset. For example, let's try this Night Vision preset instead. Okay, I like how that looks. I'll double click it. I'm switched back into After Effects, and now you see I have this Night Vision look applied to my footage. And there's the brand new effects this animation preset applied. If I want to see those in the Effect Controls panel, I just bring it forward, and there's my new effects. Now, in addition to applying animation presets, you can save your own. For example, if you came up with a stack of effects or masks or keyframes that a client particularly likes, or if you want to go ahead and modify one of the existing animation presets, for example, if I want to make this more of a purple night rather than a green night vision, I'll go ahead and select all the effects or keyframes or masks that I want to be part of this preset and save it in a couple different ways. 
I can click on this icon in the lower right corner of the Effects and Presets panel, and that will go ahead and create a new animation preset. Or I can click on the Options menu for Effects and Presets panel and say Save Animation Preset. And here I get to choose my new name, such as Purple Knight. Choose where I want to save it. I can go ahead and keep it in the same folder I was in. Or maybe put it loose in the Presets panel. Maybe even make my new folder called My User Presets. Click Create and Save. After Effects will update the panel. I'll scroll down Animation Presets, and there's my brand new folder, My User Presets, and there's my preset, Purple Knight. Now there's one gotcha I need to warn you about, about animation presets, and that if they have keyframes, they're very sensitive as to where the current time indicator is. They start applying the keyframes at the current time indicator. I'm gonna go ahead and undo to remove my previous preset. There we go. And pick a transition preset. Oh, just for fun, let's go ahead and pick one of these block dissolves. If I double click it or drag it onto my layer and type U to reveal my keyframes, you'll see that the first keyframe is not at the start of my layer, but instead where the current time indicator is. So therefore, if you're applying any presets that have keyframes, it's very important to first go to where you want the first keyframe to be, then apply the animation preset. And now the keyframes will start where you want them to. So I hope that makes you more familiar with the Effects and Presets panel, makes you feel more comfortable with it. You don't have to use it. Virtually everything that's in Effects and Presets is duplicated by the Effects menu and the Animation menu. However, I think you'll find Effects and Presets are very convenient to use. For example, you don't need to remember what folder anything is in. You go ahead and type something like Radial and quickly get all of your effects that have Radial in it, regardless what folder they're saved in. So it's a very handy time saver, and I think you'll find it'll save you some time while you're working.